Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another NCA Rugby podcast. My name's Joe Harvey, and as ever, I'm joined by Hent. Right on ncarugby.com. Some time job now, probably just editing and putting a lot of time notes into everything. That's what we're told. Yeah. yeah. That's Chris Hill, by the way. I should probably make that a bit more clear. But Chris, um, so yeah, we are at another club today on our travels yet again. Although, we're probably going to get criticised for maybe not being on our travels enough. Well, one. I mean, you look at the trains in the last sort of two weeks or so, and I think our <laughs> decision has been God, justified. Yeah. Uh, we are at Cesar Park, which is obviously a club very close to us in terms of uh, both Matt Tashroff and Matt Scott, who work for the WMCA. Um, it's there and there with the club, and it has been for quite a few years now. So, uh, we thought we'd be at Christmas time, we'll make it easy for ourselves, but still some great interviews at to come, John. Yeah, no, and um, we are also videoing today's podcast, so that's a bit of an interesting thing. We haven't done that since Violet? No. Well, we're we're yes. giving the video of the file was March, wasn't it? March time? Wow, that was a long time ago. March time, time. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, but yeah, so we're also videoing it, so I'm sure that'll be available on YouTube, and you'll see me fidgeting around quite a lot because. Uh, it's actually quite, it's quite an interesting job maintaining all this equipment and everything like that that we've got going on at the minute. Um, but yeah, this is actually one year since the first NTA Rugby podcast. It was actually part of my university coursework. Um, I rocked up one day in December, we all did a pod, uh, and then I went home to the University of Derby, where I then ended up completing my studies, and now I'm doing this all the time. Um, so yeah, that's, and the thing is, the topic of that podcast was talking about taking part Tigers, there are two players in the room. Uh, we couldn't get down to a club because of the not expense but we were, the sound, and, we, and we were uncertain whether or not the podcast was going to become a regular mm. occurrence since then it has become a regular occurrence and is now exclusively on the road for ncaa.com now yeah we're excited about tigers park lane yeah, for yeah. my first visit, and Max couldn't believe that when i told him the i can't believe it when you told us yeah when i used to do the stop port stuff it was um the two games that i missed that season were sent home and away which is a oh, right. coincidence that is odd. Yeah. So, it's funny how uh, things are. But now I'm here, so I'm more off the list. Yeah, so we are going to be talking about National 1, National 2 North, and National 2 South in this quick podcast. So we might as well get into, and to be fair, another way we're going to justify being upset is because they're in the top three of National 2 North as things stand. They are third two with only, sorry, I'll actually learn English one day. Um, Coldy are top of the league uh, with a game in hand with 66 points, having won 14 games on the trot. Wow. Yeah, I think that's the one word you could probably say about Colby as well. They've been completely relentless um, since coming down from National 1, Joe. I mean, every podcast we talk about them, they've not lost yet, they've not lost yet, and we're coming up to the Christmas period, 14 games, winning streak, and obviously last weekend was a, a really double double win for them, really. Like, you know, they've got a fab- fabulous win at home to Stalbridge, and then to find out they've failed, they've been beaten against Sheffield Tigers, like, well, now we've got a bit of breathing space, eight points clear at the top, and they've never hid away from the fact that they want to be a national world club again, so they're going the right way about it. Um, they've got Chester, I think, this weekend to, to finish off the 2019, so a win away at Chester, and that's some statement for Colby in the first half of the year. I'll tell you what, that is the thing, isn't it? And as well, they maintain so many players, so it's probably not yeah, a massive surprise that yeah. you know, things are going so well. Um, Filed are currently second with 58 points, uh, but did lose 16 points to 10 at Sheffield. Um, they beat essentially part times before that. Yeah. At the Woodlands. Yeah. So, do you, were people maybe expecting Fylde to kick on from that result because it was such a close rival at the time? I, I think so, Joe. I think you're absolutely spot on there. I think that win against Sedgwick is probably like, well, here we go. It's well and truly in our hands now. Yes, Sedgwick got that game in hand to come against Colby and start the new year. But I mean, they were um, they they were pretty pretty disappointed in the second half. And Warwick Brock said that himself, you know, they played well to get 10 6 in front of it, let the game slip away from them in this stage of the season with Sedge playing the way they have been playing, especially last week, they're right back on the tails again. Yeah, and it just is one of those mad seasons at the top of National 2 North, as it always kind of has been since I stopped covering the league in particular. Uh, and then that does also mean that we're going to third <coughs> place, which is Sedgley Park Tigers. Sedgley Park Tigers are still, well, they're back into the uh, kind of promotion race we we'll call it top three is always the most exciting bit after they smash the scum here at park lane and also have a game in hand because they have to play cold after their game was cold off on a day i got stranded in chester yeah it was the weather was pretty bad that day it was, I remember. Awful. It was awful it was absolutely dreadful with the world cup final no, it was the no, semi final. It, semi-final, semi-final, it took me five hours to travel 30 miles. Yeah, not not the best. Not the best, but. I'm not bitter. 
and so and so does such and you know that is yeah, a sorry, game that they <laughs> that is the game they're going to want to really challenge and look, look towards me and, you know we spoke to we will be coming on to speaking to scott but we've pretty good um okay. he did say you know it's all about so for one game at a time and they do get past what they on the weekend it's it's a big sort of a big marker for them they can go into next season and start planning for maybe finishing out top two but if, if they do get the result on the weekend they will be looking at a final game with that colder game in hand in February is the two big games where their season could could be decided so um, but they'll be massively massively pleased with the performance of the weekend and they do get something at a tough walk there on, on Saturday uh, Saturday afternoon you know they'll be pretty pleased with that yeah it's such a notoriously difficult place to go is Wolfdale all the farmers as I generally very understand hostile. And, uh, very hostile but very passionate no, I haven't actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were they when you first started? They were in National 3, which was National 3 North at the time. <laughs> right. Um, and then they came up, but you know, they're really passionate down there. Um, and they'll be, you know, they'll be absolutely revved up to get, get the win. I think they've, you know, they've had a bit of an indifferent form and I think they're 12 or 13 from the league. So they'll be really keen to get the result on Saturday and Sedge will be in for a tough battle. It's always been a tough battle uh, at the Avenue. Yeah, so we might as well move into our interview with Sedgwick Park Tigers head coach Scott Farrow and after that we'll bring you a bit of a preview, kind of review of National 1. We're now joined by Sedgwick Park head coach Scott Barrow on the NCAA Rugby Podcast. Scott, how has life been settling in at Sedgwick Park? It's been really good, you know, I've, uh, I've come in, I got spoke to Jeff early in the summer uh, and I was umming and ahhing whether, whether to do it or not and then he said just come and do it for when you can and you know, because my job was a bit up in the air with uh, my day job so I said you know what, I spoke to guys at work at uh, Canny and they said, well, it's up to you. So I, you know, I jumped in and said, you know what, I'll do it. And, and it, they've been really good. You know, I settled in really well. Um, there was nothing, no pressure put on me. The only pressure really I put on is, is on myself. Um, they give, there's the squad. Um, is there anyone you want to bring in or what can we do to help? And, you know, everyone's been great. And I've got a good coaching team with me. And if, I'm, if I can't make it due to all the commitments, then um, they'll take over and if they can't make it I'll generally do a lot of it anyway so you know there's been no pressure put on me and I've really enjoyed the role so far. And just, just for people that don't know what, what is the day job if people maybe aren't even watching the video that we're doing today yeah, because uh, uh, you are wearing a Yorkshire Carnegie uh, top so what yeah, is the day yeah, job? Yeah um, my role, former role was a transition coach for the Yorkshire Carnegie Academy uh, to go into the first team now, obviously a, a lot's gone on with the first team and, and where they're at, so we've been steadily pulled away, the licence for the academy has been taken away from, from Carnegie, so we're still running as an academy, we still have senior academy players who, who I look after, we're uh, in the middle of rebranding into the Yorkshire Rugby Academy, uh, so I still have quite a lot of lads uh, and, and their development to look after and, and at the moment, uh, Sale Sharks have been really good and we have six or seven lads playing for the Jets on a Monday night. Uh, and training once or twice a week with the first team as as uh, our first team or the county your first team is now is now semi professional training Tuesday Thursday night so those lads need a bit of a reference point they need to know um, what it looks like to be a professional and uh, you know still have been really great in that and, and allowing us to to tread that path a little bit. Yeah, with your role there, Scott, I mean, you're looking at the Sedgley Park team, it's a very, very young team, and we spoke to Leon Simpson last month, and he said it's been a really smooth transition. Do you feel that as a coach, that you've been able to use your skills in the past into this Sedgley team? Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely do. There's a lot of young lads, you know, there's still quite a few, it's still at MMU, and some just come out of MMU, so, um, you know, there is a, a young group, and I feel um, the older lads who have been here a while, you know, your Riles Piggy, they, they, they are helping out all the time. Um, but, you, yeah, you've got Connor James, been outstanding this season. Um, probably for me, for Connor James himself, I, with, with my development hat on, to look after Connor James himself, we've actually said to him, Look, you're going to come out of rugby for, for five, six weeks and you're going to do a physical development block now as a rugby club that plays week to week and trains Tuesday to Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. It's a, I've had to you know, ask a few people if that's all right, but for Connor James to play at the highest level he can, he probably does need, you know, a block of, of uh, physical development at this point is in his career and then next year hopefully he's with us again and we'll see the benefits from that so we'll get a block of physical development now have another another block in, in the summer uh, and you know you're not always going to get coaches who are going to allow that to happen in fact it probably won't have it happen again but because uh, I'm in that side of side of things I think it's really fair that well, I guess his best opportunity yeah? and the same for, for Leon you know Leon's been outstanding he's playing a lot of rugby but I think Leon's game understanding 
is probably where he needs to go next and through playing a lot of rugby he'll get that so it's, it's, it's you know it, it's uh, different things for different players but you know hopefully they're all getting a bit better and all developing. Yeah and in that youth and experience you mentioned Riles you mentioned Piggy have you been sort of surprised by the way you've gone this year or have you felt like the balance in the squad's been perfect for you guys to be where you are at the moment? Um, well when, when I come on um, I set up the new WhatsApp group as you do when you first, <laughs> first, get, a, first get a new group of lads so I set up a, a WhatsApp group with a couple of the senior lads in so Mark Goodman, uh, Bob, Piggy, uh, Riles and said right we need to sit down as soon as we can have a look at the squad who Jeff is involved um, uh, has John uh, Johnny Rodham and, uh, and I got told Dave Livesey was coming on as well so he, he was willing to, to, to help out as well so we all sat down the table pretty early um, and they were like we've lost second row uh, we lost Guy to Chester, we lost uh, Hallam, Andy Riley has stepped away for a bit and there was a bit of a, well we're, we're doomed here, we're, we're not really struggling, we're going to struggle this season, blah blah blah. Um, so for me I just thought, you know what, what we need to do in pre-season is, is get away we want to play. I watched the, the last nine games of last season when they went unbeaten, I went away and watched that and I thought attack doesn't need a lot of work on. Um, they know the system, they know there's not a lot of change needs to come in there. So I said, right, I'll focus for the first six weeks. Well, the first yeah, six weeks leading into the season was going to be our defence. Um, and then the first couple of warm games, everyone was like, it's good, this. We never really defended properly before. We always, it's <laughs> you score, we score, yeah, yeah, you score, yeah. we score. So it was, it was great. And, you know, the lads have really bought into everything that I've sort of done in pre season. And then the coaches had are uh, helping me out and we just seem to have got gained confidence from each other from getting a good defensive system in place. The attack's always been sound, they've always scored points uh, and, and the way that's gone on it's just sort of snowballed a bit because they're thinking, well, well, he knows his stuff, we'll back him and I, I've seen them put the body on the line week after week and you know, non more so first game of the season at Preston. Was, we went in with very little detail of, of how I wanted to attack just the system of defence and out and out effort and determination won us the game. Definitely, um, yeah. To see that in the first game, you can't coach that into a lot of teams and into a lot of lads. So to see that first up in the very first pressure situation, it was like, right, we're all right here, we're going to be fine. And as soon as the Preston game was finished, I said, look, I'm really proud. That's one of those things you, you just can't coach into teams. And you know, we've added details since, and the, the details kept on. Uh, sort of layering on, layering on, and, and hopefully we're developing it as a squad as, as we go. Yeah. yeah. So you want to just talk about this weekend? Yeah, I can do. I mean, um, you're looking, uh, you know, midway point of the season, Scott. I mean, you, you know, you had that defeat against Fylde, but obviously they dropped points last weekend, and you put in a great performance against Scunthorpe. Do you feel that the race for that top two is now back on, or was it ever off, if, if you like? Well, with this. Like I said, from coming in, walking through the door, there's been no pressure to say, we want what top two, we right. want top four, we want, it was just enjoy it, get stuck in and, and see, where, see where we end up. And I've always said, if we're in with a shout at Christmas, then you know, we've, we'll think about that once we get past Christmas and we're back into the new year. Um, if we go to Wharfdale this week, massive test for us, uh, just physically, mentally, I think we're probably on paper, we're, we have got a better squad, but. Those guys, you know, in Wharfdale, the Christmas party, it's going to be chocker, they're going to be, it's hostile anyway. Uh, and some of our lads won't have experienced that. Um, so, you know, it's good for them just to go, experience it, see what it's like to play under a bit of pressure. And if we get to Christmas and we've only lost three, I'll be really pleased. You know, I don't, the lads are saying, I, I don't know so much, but the lads are saying, they've lost six or seven this time last, last year. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they said, let's have a look after Christmas, but, you know, let's get the Wharfdale game. Uh, done and you, let's concentrate on it. Make sure if we if we don't come away winners, we learn a lot from it and we have the experience of playing in a hostile environment. Some, like I said, some of the lads, young lads, who have never experienced that before. Uh, so you know it, it'll be uh, be a good day on Saturday. I think uh, the lads will the lads will be up for it. And, you know, hopefully we can get to Christmas with three losses. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I think that's it for us. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much for joining us, Scott, and all the best for the rest of the season. Thanks very much. Cheers, gents. Straight into National One. Now there's five points separating the top four, one point separates the top three. That top four being Richmond, Rosalind, Rams, and Chinnan. Rams are probably the big surprise in all of this. I think the surprise is a normal one that we use a lot, Joe, but in the podcast we've talked about Rams. They've had such a flying start to the season that they've, I think, 
because we're asking Marvel Rich going to be in a sort of swapping places over the last couple of weeks, many people have not really focused on Rams and six wins in the last seven has, has literally just kept them in such for the last couple of weeks, but on the weekend they'll manage to go 11 on points with Rosin Park on second. And you know, right on the tails of Richmond now, and it's an absolutely compelling sort of title race. And I know you're going to go on to it, Joe, that Chinna are also in the mix after a good recent fall. Yeah, Chinna was one of those clubs that we were looking at during the preseason saying, look at those players they're signing. Lawrence May, of course, just at Ealing before that. I'm just trying to think, Carl Cohen, who you spoke to mm -hmm. the day, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and yeah, Richmond carried on their good form with another win over, well, with another win, this time over Birmingham. But Birmingham mostly 29 points, 10 that was. Richmond obviously having a bit of a kind of a, a dour spell. Yeah, I mean, they got beat by Sale, didn't they? Sale FC. They got beat by um, Rosen Park, they got beat by someone else. And Plymouth Albion as well, um, which was probably the most surprising of the three. Um, so, you know, they sort of bounced themselves back from that. And because, you know, Rosen Park and Rams have played each other as well, it's, they've managed to just get back the season back on track and you know I think if he'd gone to the club at the start of the season after what happened in the summer and said you know you'll be top at Christmas time they'd start me down off so they do get their result against Chile this weekend which is a massive game which we'll go on to as well you know they'll be very very pleased but they've done well to get the season back on track after you know the mini dip was probably expected during such a competitive national one campaign this year. Yeah Rosalind Park as well last season they were so close but it seemed also yeah, so far from that, that number one spot but you know, they won 8.6 of the weekend. Now that's a hard fought victory against, yeah. what was it, Cinderford? Cinderford yeah. Against a pretty good Cinderford side that had a very good start of the season. So, would it be fair to suggest that they're finding ways to win, even if it is ugly now? That was a massive win for them. You know, they all may say to you, oh yeah, the Richmond game was big, you know. At the time, you know, and they were seven points behind them, I think, and they managed to narrow the gap. Um, and then, you know, they've come into it and they've come, come away, sorry, from Sydney with a half four win and you know that might be something to look back on at the end of the season and think you know that was a that was a big big win for us. And I know it was only four points and they lost top spot because uh, they didn't pick up the bonus point and Richmond picked up all five against Birmingham Mosley, but you're absolutely right, Joe, if you're gonna go and try and challenge for a tie, you've got to find ways to win on that cold December afternoon. It's absolutely freezing. Um, we kind of just talked about Roslyn and Rams there, even. Um, Rams, of course, level one points, Roslyn Park. Uh, Chinna, seven games unbeaten, beat Darlington Mowden, Mowden, sorry, Darlington Mowden Park last weekend. Mowden, they're a good team. And a lot of young talent, all roughly the same age, but then they've also got that kind of sprinkling of experience players. And they're one of those teams that you kind of always expect. Might be fair to say this, but maybe just a bit more. Yeah, I think they had a mixed season last year, and to be honest, they started this season a bit, a bit of a patchy form. But recently, before that Chinna game, they were really going well. I think it was four or five games they had them beaten, and it was sort of a big game really for both sides because they knew they were only five points behind the top. It, a win would keep them in touch with the title race, and Chinna managed to get the win last weekend um, against a really strong Darlington Mowden Park side. So. You know, DMP and I think have slipped down to seventh because of the result, and that shows how tight it is. If you lose one game, you could be out of the running for a bit. So it's a big, big win for Chinna, and they're starting to hit the stride at right, just at the right time. Seven games unbeaten now, and if they were to go and get a result against Richmond on Saturday, then that is an absolutely monumental run of form they put together going into the new year. And one of those four teams that we've just talked about are likely to be our first stop in 2020. Yes, we're open to, uh, we're at the end of the cycle now because we started on a bright sunny afternoon evening at oh Preston, God. no coats required. Uh, that evening at the south side, and that's training at the wonderful facilities at Life Up Green. But now we're sat here, it's dark, it's chucking it down. That's what I was about to say, it was roughly the same time as this we were watching training at Preston. Yeah. Contrast, yeah, it's, it's freezing cold. We've been put into the, into the bar area, which is all Christmassy in there, uh, nice and warm for us. But yeah, we're open to start the new year by going back to National One, so uh, we'll be having a bit of a meeting about that in the new year about where we're going to go to. So uh, watch out for that one. Controversially, yeah. is Christmas man? No, no, I don't no. know. Like all right, okay, I'm gonna get fine. Yes, you are. You don't, then you're allowed on the Christmas do then, if you don't like Christmas. What well, it doesn't really count, does it? Can I have a full any sound here? Yeah. Every night. Um, yeah, uh, so obviously we talked about the top of National 1. And then, well, always has a top, always has a bottom. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Canterbury have a win and a loss to relegation rivals Rotherham at the weekend. Canterbury have been just taking it national one with all its glory from what I've been seeing from some of the boys there. It, it's difficult to explain because they were so good in national two south last year. Yeah, you know, it was always going to be tough for them. You know, they're a club that's stuck to the principles, stuck to their ethos. Um, and they have found it really tough. They got yeah. such a, a big win the other week at the start of the month and people were having you know, that's a major positive. There's still a lot of work for them to do if they're going to even try and turn around what's actually happened uh, so far this season. But that Rotherham defeat would have really hurt them. Um, you know, they were 17-7 up, Joe. Uh, and, you know, for Rotherham to come back is, uh, you know, the other side of the coin, if you like, that may reinvigorate them now. Um, eight points off the uh, off safety, sorry. And, you know, they will now be thinking, you know, if they get a decent result on the weekend and then go into the new year, still in touch with you, like to Birmingham Mills here, we're just above the relegation zone, then we've got a chance. But, you know, that would have really stung Canterbury after such a good start to the month. Yeah, and Canterbury have been losing Jamie Diva, he's going back to Major League Rugby and things like that. So, yeah, things aren't exactly looking up, which is the sad thing. And But the thing is, at this stage of the season, unfortunately, we have to basically suggest that Canterbury have done it actually. Was. Yeah, same think, with the Lionians. I think when I when I was with Stockport um, and when they were in National Two North, they were in a similar situ situation. That was 2014-15 season. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I think even you know you speak to some of the lads there, they were probably accepted it when you know you head into the January period that we were we were all the way off. I think Stockport won one game or maybe two games by that point, and they knew it was probably done then. And um, so, you know, the realist and the club will think there's a long way to go and you might have the optimist that be believing that, yeah, you know, a couple of results in January might be able to spark something. But honestly, I think, um, not me sitting on the fence here, Joe, but I think both of them, they're, they're really struggle to turn any and that around then it could be uh, already over for them with, you know, for still 15 games to go. And what I would like to say, Canterbury have got a great do. And Hull Ironians' club is fantastic, by the way. Oh. Brandon and Hart's one of the best facilities in the National League, so, you know, they'll be missed from National League. Well, I mean, they'll be straight back International 2 North, where things are as competitive as that. Exactly. Uh, talking of a man that knows about kind of National 1, Championship, National 2 North. He's done it all. So good they named him once. Correct. Next chat is with club captain at Sessions Park Tigers, Matt Riley. We're now joined by Matt Riley, captain of Sessions Park Tigers on the NCAA podcast. Matt, currently injured at the minute, but how are things? Yeah, things are good, things are good. Not for myself personally, but the club, yeah, we're doing all right at the minute. Yeah, we uh, lost three games at the minute so far, all by less than seven points, so the team's doing really well. Yeah, third place at the minute, four points off of file who are just ahead of you. And obviously you guys have got a game on hand as well, so that must kind of make you feel quite confident going into the new year. Yeah, it does, it does. It's probably the best we've done for a few seasons, even though we've got to playoffs and stuff. We're in third place, but I don't think we've got to Christmas with only three losses before. Uh, we had a chance against Fylde the other week to, to close the gap, couldn't quite manager draw in the last uh, closing minutes and we've still got a game in hand obviously against Coldy. Um, so we're hoping after Christmas if we can get past Wharfdale this week hopefully put a good run together after Christmas and try and uh, put pressure on the top two. And you're essentially part of the longest serving first team player. Uh, what has it been, 10 years? Um, I think this is my 14th season. 14th yeah. season, right. So you were with the club when they were in what was then known as National World, which is the Championship. Yeah. So, you've seen this club go through loads of changes really yeah. in that time. Yeah, thanks for making <laughs> me feel really, really, really old. <laughs> I can make you feel old and tell you how old I was when you yeah. first joined the team. Yeah. Yeah. Were you even bought? I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen lots of coaches come and go and players come and go and stuff like that. And it's nice now. I think when I first joined, I was 20, I think. That's why I was one of the young lads and I used to look at all the old guys who were like 30 odd and slowing down and putting weight on it and I used to think, bloody hell, they're old. <laughs> That's what all the young lads must think of me now, but it's it's nice having a bit of experience and trying to give other lads a little bit back and just seeing young lads develop and giving them, you know, we've got some some other experienced lads, it's not just me that's old and we've got a lot of young lads, so we just sort of try and give them the confidence, just go out and play. And, yeah, hopefully they're doing that. They're doing they're doing the business on a Saturday, which is good to see. Yeah, because Scott mentioned about the young, the young lads that have come into the side this year, Matt. Are you sort of are you surprised by how well the club's done this year because they've gone through a transition again? Or? Um, I wouldn't say surprised. Maybe if you'd have, if you'd have said to me beginning of June, you know, we didn't have a coach at that time. We were still waiting on the decision off Scott uh, without probably having a having a backup. So <laughs> thankfully he signed. Um, <laughs> we lost. 
quite a few lads who've been with us for four or five, six years, uh, experienced lads. We lost them over the summer. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to rebuild because Scott came in so late. He managed to pick up a few young lads and stuff. And, you know, if you'd have said to us then, the beginning of June, you're going to get to Christmas, you're going to lost three games by less than seven points, you'd have probably snapped your hand off your hair, if I'm honest. But I'm not, I'm not surprised. We've got some talented lads here. Uh, we've had a few injuries over the, the, the past three months or something, but we've we've got a, a bit of strength in depth this year, something we've probably not had in previous years. So I'm not surprised, no, to be honest. And in terms of sort of, you know, you've been you've been involved in promotion challenges in the past, you know, you've been to playoff finals and trying to crack that top two. Do you think what, what do you think is necessary if Sedge were to try and or their ambitions were to try and take that step this year? Uh, it's just consistency, I think. Because um, this league's getting so competitive. Yeah, it is, so. it is. And, and especially when you're near the top of the league, all the teams at the bottom, form goes out the window, you, they see you as a bit of a scalp, especially when they're playing at home. Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, a team like Warfordale, they might be in 12th position, but they've got some really good players. And especially near Christmas, they probably have a decent crowd there. And um, the teams see you as a scalp. It's just consistency. It's just turning up week in, week out, knowing that, you know, teams at the bottom of the league, they're going to going to play twice as well as he might have done the previous week just to, to try and beat you. Mm. And how does this squad compare to previous years? Because it seems like it's probably the longest well, age, like average age, that you probably yeah. had in quite a while. Yeah, I think um, it's hard to tell. I can probably tell you that at the end of the season, you know, in previous years we've probably had more um, recognisable names and people with a bit more experience. Um, yeah, we've done well. We've got to two playoffs in previous years. And, I think I think this is, is exciting. I think there's some young lads who are showing some real promise, and the more games they play, the better they'll get. It's, it's just exciting. I think you know, we're going to kick on. We'll see where we finish at the end of this season. We're looking to rebuild for next season already, trying to get as many lads signed up as possible. Then we can see what we're missing and try and target some key positions and, and go again next year. And what is your what is one of your standout memories from the time so far? Not to there? make Matt feel old again, are Because oh, <laughs> yeah. I remember the, North Hampton, the Northampton ones. Well, I don't know if that was a good memory. 96-3. <laughs> it, it, it was good for Northampton. It was good for the three. Yeah, no. Um, oh, I'd love this. There's so many memories, I think. So many wins. I think you always try and remember your wins on the road, like when you're going all the way to Cornwall and picking up a win to Red Ruth or Launce, and they're, they're the good days. That, Sometimes it's not necessarily the games, it's the memories of going out for a drink with the lads and I think it's just the people you meet. Honestly, the people I've met for this club, not just the players, but the, the coaches, the committee men, the staff, the, the fans and stuff like that, I think that's that's probably my best memory and that's probably what's kept me here so long, I think. But yeah, we, we've not really won, I think we've won the Lancashire Cup twice since I've been here. A couple of playoff defeats, probably not won many things, but... You know, for me, success, it's not, at this level, it's not always judged on how many trophies you've won, but the, 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 the good times that you've had, I think, for me. And I, I don't expect you to be keeping up with this, but <laughs> 350 appearances last season, so it must be, what, 360, about 370, getting on 370. Yeah. When, when, does it, when does it hit a point where you're thinking, the body can't hack this anymore? Um, if I'm honest, uh, 33, is, for me, that's not old and... I have been, apart from this season, I've been really, really lucky with injuries. I've probably played through some that I shouldn't have done, but I've not missed many, if I'm honest, over the last 10 years. Last season, I managed to lose a little bit of weight, a little bit of weight and felt good and played 30 games and felt really good. So I come into this season full of confidence. First session of pre-season brought me form. <laughs> so, but I, I always say I, I carry on playing for um, one, as long as I keep enjoying it, and two, um, as long as I think I can still um, still give to the team, and, and at the minute I still feel like I've got a lot to give. So I'm, yeah, I'm just happy at the minute. Yeah. Well, Matt, we, we obviously do wish you a very speedy recovery. Yeah. Um, hope to see you back in that 12 shirt soon. Uh, and yeah, all the best for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're uh, now joined on the NCA podcast by Club Physios Ben and Alan. Guys, thanks very much for joining us. Ben, we'll start with you. Um, first of all, how did you get involved with the job at Central Park? Um, I got involved with the job through one of my lecturers at uni, um, Liz Fowler, who sort of invited me down uh, after I graduated. She was leaving her post here. Um, and I started off with the second team. That was... Um, five seasons ago now, so I'm into my sixth season here. Uh, so I worked with the second team 
for two seasons and then moved up to the uh, first team alongside Alan. Yeah, and is, was that for like your experience really that you decided to come down and give it a go? In? Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was difficult in getting work after I graduated, um, so it was sort of a, a foot in the door for me to work in sport. Um, and sort of instantly, as soon as I came down here, and felt like I was part of a, a family, part of a community, and yeah, the, the rest is history. I didn't want to leave, so yeah. I'm still here. And Alan, I, I presume you get the same vibe as well, that this is a club that's now really close to you. How, how long have you been here for? Yeah, I've been here, um, this is my ninth season, so it's got been, pretty much been 10 years now. Um, Similar sort of scenario in some respects, I was at Caldy prior to that, I did three years at Caldy. Um, and then actually it was Liz, um, who we sort of both know, I used to work with Liz at Salford. Um, and basically she was uh, leaving uh, and she sort of said, you know, I wanted, I was looking for something a little bit closer to closer to Manchester, which obviously, uh, I don't know, but at Caldy every, every week was a bit, yeah, bit of a trek. Yeah, that. Yeah, it wasn't great. Um, uh, so we sort of, I took over from Liz with the first team stuff. Uh, and yeah, that was, was 2011 sort of season that I sort of started with that. So it's uh, been going on a while now. And obviously they've been a national one club, they've been a national two club. So it is, you know, a really good standard. So how do you juggle your day job with coming here? Because obviously the man's here are quite pretty much difficult as well. Yeah, I mean you don't get away from the lads for the most part. Um, <laughs> Matt Riley, but, in particular. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a few of them. Yeah, uh, Max Ashcroft uh, definitely is one of them. Um, <laughs> Glad to <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of teach on the sport rehab degree at Salford, so that's my full, full-time job. So I'm a sport rehabber, uh, been a sports therapist. Right. Um, and so that's, as I say, a full-time job, so I'm program leader from now, and it, it's kind of, takes it takes a bit of time, to be fair, but I think we both see this as a bit more of a hobby as much as work yeah, as well, to be fair. Definitely. Is that because of sort of like the camaraderie you guys have? Yeah, it's, just, it's just nice being in a club atmosphere. I mean, we're both sort of football backgrounds in reality but rugby's we played a bit of rugby well you played one game played one game <laughs> 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 um, left tall because of it um, <laughs> so yeah that was a bit of a laugh um, and it still comes up at work actually quite often um, so it is can be a bit difficult juggling it but like I say we see it as more of a more of a hobby rather than work so it's actually quite nice to come down and we don't see it as a chore to be here it's good being around the lads despite Matt Rails um, being, being around um, too much at the moment unfortunately um, so yeah, it's, you just get on with it and do it, and it's just a bit of extra. It's nice to keep those hands in as well for us. It's you know doing that part time helps with the teaching as well because we've got to practice what we preach with. Really. Absolutely. Then for any young young people coming through into your profession, is that something you definitely recommend? And looking at local rugby clubs because you can get so many opportunities here. Oh, 100%. Um, like rugby is just unique. Like as Alan said, sort of part of a football background. Um, it's just a, a completely different atmosphere. As soon as you join a rugby club, you're part of a community, part of a family, um, and it's just really enjoyable. And, you know, relaxed atmosphere to, to work in. Um, certainly, from my perspective, I love the physicality of it as well. Despite obviously popping my shoulder and first getting played, but actually getting out and doing the, the rehab with the lads and, and you know, getting involved in, in that sense, I think it's invaluable for people to, to work in a contact sport. Because like. you must see so many like complex injuries. Because rugby is probably the most physically demanding sport. Oh yeah, yeah, we see a, a huge variety of, of injuries, and you know it's, it keeps us on our toes. Um, and certainly for a, a student or a new grad, um, you know, to, to come into rugby. Um, they'll get such a vast array of, of experience from that. Yeah, that's part of the reason why we set up the internship program here as well. And you know, we have um, sort of four students with us who are second years, and then um, we sort of take first years on massage-based placements as well. Um, so again, they, they get exposure to that. So is that during the week, or is that on the weekends, or uh, throughout a, the? A bit of both. Yeah, so we have the, 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 the interns and the massage students down on a Tuesday and Thursday. And then we'll have the second year interns sort of assisting us pitch side on a Saturday so they get exposure to that match day environment as well. Absolutely, and just to exposure to a slightly different personality on our level as well. Oh, it's been at uni, I think. <laughs> <laughs> see, see slightly different people from uh, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday oh, yeah. compared to in the week. And uh, just finally, I think if you don't mind giving us an exclusive, um, Matt Riley, how long have you? Is he going to be back for? Well, or? Matt Riley, how long is he going to be back for? The, the enigma that is uh, Matt Riley's um, fifth match tarsal. Um, it's uh, at the moment we're still sort of trying to find out a little bit more info. He's got due for another X-ray soon, hopefully. Um, we're, we're waiting on that uh, to see whether this uh, troublesome fifth match has actually healed. Um, it's been well, we got him back, and then at Hull just seemed to do sort of twist on it a little bit, a bit funny somewhere along the line, and it flared up again. So. It's been three, four weeks again now, um, so we're, we're hoping back in the new year that we'll be 
seeing Matt Riles running around on a pitch again and running over people. <laughs> great stuff. Well, guys, thanks very much for your time. It's been great chatting to you. Thanks very much. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Right, on to kind of the, the bottom half of National 2 North now, but you can also probably tell I've been joined by Max Ashcroft. Um, if anyone's watching this, one of us might not be on screen right now because it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Yeah, it's a bit tight, isn't it? We're getting nice and up, up close and personal. We don't really spend too much time together. We do, yeah. we do indeed. <laughs> but uh, we're going to just kind of talk about some stuff that happened last weekend in National 2 North, as well as kind of just talking about training tonight and Wolf Devil with Kevin Sesley Park Tigers. Uh, kind of a nice way to end up the year. And so. The one result that caught everyone's eyes, I think, was the nil-nil draw between Oldham and Preston. Yep. What, have you ever been involved in the nil-nil? No, no. I was, when I saw the result, I was trying to think if I've been involved in one of those, but no, I haven't. Um, but to be honest, I'm probably not surprised that those two teams had the nil-nil draw. They were probably just doing a lot of scrummaging, doing a lot of driving malls, which they're very good at. Right. <laughs> they're the two, they've probably got the two best set piece in the in national two. Right. So. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised that that was a no no draw, really. <laughs> uh, and Preston Gretchen was at eight points from safety at the minute, so they're in that relegation zone as things stand. Uh, also in that is Huddersfield after the time to beat them at the weekend, which is leap from which is a result of leap from Huddersfield, yeah. and they're out there. Uh, Huddersfield, have you, 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 you played Huddersfield so far this season? I wasn't playing, but I know the lads, they were always a tough team, always, you know, they were there like about last season, and you know, they've strong a little bit this year, but they've still got some really good results. I think they turned over Loughborough, and Loughborough sort of high flying at the minute, and one of the teams in full. So, you know, I think they can probably beat anybody in the, in the lead on a day. Yeah, and Huddersfield play on with this weekend, so hopefully the Huddersfield attack coach is feeling pretty good going into that one, yeah. and the Oakley defence coach is feeling pretty good too. Yeah. So uh, it's a bit of an interesting one, is that? Uh, but there's only six points between them, so it could basically mean that Huddersfield could crawl, kind of claw some yeah. space back on there. Uh, now we're going to talk about your game of the weekend, uh, playing Sed well, Sedgwick Park Tiger, we're playing Wolfdale, sorry. Yeah. Um, Wolfdale. Interesting place. Yeah, very interesting place. Um, in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, get all the, the, the town over watching the game. All the farmers. All the farmers. I didn't want to say it quite right, but yeah, all the farmers would be there. All, all, the all the tractors would be parked up outside. Um, <laughs> it's quite a hostile place to go play. It's a bit of a random place as well. Um, but you know, I think um, it's always a tough game down there. Physical park. Um, good set piece. Good in the line out. So it's going to be a test. It's actually about times this season, third place as things stand. Are you surprised with the early season form that you guys have been having? Uh, not surprised, they've had a lot of young lads play this season. Um, I think they've, they've got however many games under their belt now, and they're just going to keep getting better and better. Um, you know, we've had our injuries, you know, uh, obviously Matt Riley being out of a big loss, but a lot of lads are stepping up. And, you know, <laughs> The early part of the season, you know, it was a learning curve for a lot of the young lads, but I think now they've really bedded in and, you know, the future's bright for Sturge Lady and they're literally getting better in every single game, which is great to see. And, you know, this league's so competitive, but it's great that we've got such young players, you know, in the mix and having, giving it a go. All right. Max, uh, we have to go now. So, uh, yeah, no, thank you very much for joining us and um, myself and Chris have just been cracking on with National 2 South next. There's a two point gap between the top three, which is the top three. Oh wow. The top three, which is Tunbridge Dudians, Henley and Taunton. Tunbridge Dudians beating Bury St Edmunds at the weekend, coming from behind to do that. Is that the is that the sign of champions? Well, you know, you hinted before, Joe, about Rosden Park getting the job done and honestly that is the most stereotypical way if you were going to try and get promoted is that's what all the signs were there for the Tunbridge Dudians on the weekend, you know, they've had a couple of tough results um, pretty, you know, so far this season and it looked like they may have been going another way to another defeat which isn't what they wanted just before Christmas but you know, they went to a very side, they hadn't lost at home all season and to go there and turn it round is a massive, massive victory for them and like we just said against Rosalyn Park, it could be a result towards the end of the season but they go, that was a win, that win in December away at Berry could be the turning point and it's been so you know, swapped and changed a lot of the top of national team south. So a uh, big win for Tumbridge Dudians going into the weekend. Yeah, second place, Henley went to the Leicester Lions and won. Leicester have actually been a great fight considering they were just kind of shifted, shifted to national two south because of their geographical location. Um, I, can, I can't say some word, but I can say geographical location without really thinking about it. That's bizarre. Um, yeah, Leicester's not an easy place to go. National two north side knew that. Mm. And now the south is quite quickly learning that as well. Because you would have thought they would use that to their advantage with them being a Middleton's club, 
yeah. um, the southern teams, you know, having to travel a long way to get there, Leicester be thinking actually this is where we can really hammer home our advantage. But again, it's similar to some Rajudians for Henley to go there and get a win. They've been really strong there. Leicester Lions this season is really, really big for them, so they're massively pleased. I know every team wants to try and get a bonus point, but that was really, really massive for us. Is that the important thing for maybe a side that's challenging for kind of a title or a promotion, something like that? Is that the most important thing that they've been able to win on the road to kind of ensure that you get points every week and your opposition, maybe you're playing weight, your, your closest rivals, are yeah. getting that advantage? Yeah, definitely. I'm 100% agree with you, Joe, because you know, if you're, you know, you've just got to try and take it as yourselves and play the way you need to play it because if you try and say, oh, well, what are they doing this weekend? Oh, they've got a tough trip. There's no point doing that. You've got to focus on yourselves and get the result and then look at, you know, in the clubhouse after the game, right in hand, you've got the win and the result. That's all that matters at this stage of the season. Yeah, Taunton had a bit of a rocky last couple of weeks, but they look back to the best after the win against all Red Clippians. And, you know, is that the difference? Because Taunton, Taunton are a good team. They've always been a good team. Yeah, this, that's the thing, always. The always bride's been mate, never the bride. Yeah, <laughs> no, and it's around this time of year that they really start to lose a bit of form. Um, yeah. And it's always Christmas period, they seem to just struggle when the weather gets a bit bad, but that's a really big win for them on the weekend. They've had to grind out the results. I know the game against Sutton and Epsom wasn't straightforward for them and Sutton are down the wrong end of the table. So yeah, Tony Apple will be really, really happy with that and that you know they're very much done on the hunt and that's again at this time of the year, that's what you where you really want to be in Tottenham. I've been there, they know how to you know, get in that top three mix, it's about now sustaining it and if they're still there in February, March time, if they've got every chance of trying to wrestle up the spot from Henley and some of the Juggins. Yeah, of course. Uh, that win over OR's has basically resulted with, you know, you know that's, that's left the old breaking things with one win in nine. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to say relegation for them, but when you get in that kind of, you know, that kind of form, you don't want it to kind of consume you. No, you, you don't want it to be a habit, do you? No, and, it, and unfortunately, if you're winning one out of the last night, it is becoming a habit. Yeah, uh, they're a team that have managed to dig themselves out of trouble. Uh, the last few years, yeah. it's been string four or five wins together, and it's enough to keep you up. And it might have to be the same again for all the Cliffians. I know they had a change of coach this year, Alex Davis, who's obviously at Bath. He's, yeah. he's come in, and they've got a really exciting project there at all the Cliffians. But the results, you know, one way and nine, is not what they want to be doing. They've, they've actually slipped into that bottom three. And um, you know, at the moment it's still really tight down there, so they've got every chance to get themselves out of it. But if they are to end this year with defeat, they'll have to probably reassess stuff in January and try and figure a way out to stop this slide because you know they, they have to hold it soon because one winning nine is just not good enough at, at the moment to keep you in the league. Yeah, and they're in the bottom three alongside Sutton and Epson and Bournemouth. Um, Sutton and Epson and Bournemouth obviously were the two, two of the three teams that came up last season. Um, it's really difficult because it seems like we're always talking about these recently promoted sides that are in these relegation sides, and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a pain. But that is indicative in all sports, I've noticed. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, we say it. Well, I think we said it before when we we're uh, down old Albanian. It's one of those things that clubs coming up to this level will say, yeah, maybe we're not targeting to stay up, but you know that has to be the main aim. And um, for these, I mean, sort of Leipzig and Bournemouth, have, you know, they're, they're still in with a shout. I mean, the game that we'll probably go on to that they played the, at the end of November, sort of winning with about 15 minutes to go, and the lights went out. Um, so that so that game was abandoned. I think it's currently in the review what's going to happen with that next, and obviously we'll find out on the NCA all the latest news for that will be yeah, on the NCA. Say, the review deadline is around today. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. Kind, of, kind of today, tomorrow kind of thing. So, what will happen with that will happen if this podcast comes out after that ruling is made. You know, it's just one of those things that we can't really <laughs> account for, and whatever is the the decision that's made, if it's a replay game and that kind of is it in March? I'm not sure when it would be. Probably maybe whenever, whenever, time. yeah, whenever, whenever Coldy are playing, uh, especially Park Tigers and all the cancel games. That's when this game will probably be replayed. Um, what was the what was the result as things were going on? I think it was 2015, so sort of an episode, and, so it would, and it would be a big one because if the result stood, they'd be out the relegation zone right now. So um, yeah, it'd be an interesting outcome to see what happens there. But uh, both teams will be keen for for a result one way or the other. Yeah, and just a quick mention of Westcliff, uh, who you know beaten Isha and Red Ruth. Big wins. Two big national league names in there. Yeah, Isha. Westcliff. Are they not Westcliff? Do you think Westcliff are actually maybe gonna? Kind of escape it. I allow them. Sorry, Bax was just Walton. Um, I, I, do you know what? I think they've, they've done well recently. You know, 11 points from the last five games is massive for them, I think. Um, they've got a great setup down there. We've done an in focus this week with Joe Van der Molen, who was 
full Bedford player and Chinna player. Um, and he's just said, you know, they've kept the ethos the same, they've kept the principles the same. Um, both they've changed, you know, the, the tweaks in coaching staff, you know, Jacob Ford's coming to the club, Jackson Ray's doing bits um, in the, with the forwards, I think. And um, they've got the likes of, um, I forgot his name, and John Turner Hall, he's sort of the pathway coach at Westcliff. So they've got the right structure in place, and now they're starting to see the other awards from development in that league. So every credit to them, they've got the results that they need, and went to get the with Venetia. Not many teams will beat both of them this year, so thank you. Uh, games of the week? Games of the week. National one, Chinna versus Richmond, pretty self-explanatory that one. It's a title race, well and truly alive in that league. Chinna at home, been brilliant at home, I think they've won the last three or four at home. Yeah. Brilliant for them. Richmond, you know, they'll want to get there and just get the four points out of all that matters. For me, I'm going to go for a home win, I think. Yeah, and again, mm. National one, January. Uh, so top four of those clubs are going to be pole? pole? Yeah. Nice pole. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what the country wants, another pole. Um, National two, North Preston versus Bath. Of course, North West Derby. But also, I love the derby. Permutations at the top and bottom of the table. Massive permutations at the top and bottom of the table. Fireball will bounce back after Sheffield Tigers last week. Preston, which we discussed, which we have discussed, but you know, nil nil draw last week against Stock Lee, ending the run of defeat. But that might be the thing that pushes them to the win on the weekend. Um, draw early in the season between the two sides as well. I think Preston came back into it, file were a bit disappointed. I think I'm going to go with an away win there. Yeah. Okay, and in National 2 South, Redruth versus Taunton, of course, if Taunton win this, it sounds them in pretty good stead going mm. into the new year. Yeah, absolutely. A difficult place to go and get a result. I think you, since you spoke to Fraser Huntingdale for our in focus, they've lost yeah. once Redruth. So that's, pre that's pretty impressive. Uh, uh, and stuff phrase has been at the heart of most of the good things they've done. But Redruth have gone about the business nicely. They changed the director of rugby at the start of the year came back in, tweaked a few things, but they're going really, really well, and Torn will know that's a difficult place to go just before Christmas. To be honest, I think Red Roof might get the job done, and it might be one of those Christmas defeats that have been all too customary for uh, Torn, so hopefully Red Roof, uh, well, hopefully for Torn, that isn't the case. Right, so that is it for this month's episode of the National Club Association this year? podcast. This year? That's it's sad. been a year of podcasts, and it's the end of 2019. So, all that's really left to say is you can follow NCA Rugby at NCA underscore rugby on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me and Chris at various places. I'll, I'll answer everywhere anyway. I don't think we can stop yeah, saying that. Yeah, I It's getting a bit embarrassing when we say it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, thank you very much for listening to this latest NCA podcast. And I'm sure you'll hear us next time. <laughs>